If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Romans chapter 12. And this is just one of those family chats and one of those family uh, teachings that uh, uh, is so powerful. And I pray that you'll all be blessed today. So Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, all right, I urge you, I encourage you, brethren, ex-church, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Now, there's a, a passage of Scripture that just has been with me over the last month, and I've touched on it over the last week with the conference particularly as well, and it's when there was um, a, a bit of a war between Moab, the king of Moab, and, and the Israelites, and they came out against Moab, and Moab saw that the Lord was with the Israelites and that he's going to lose the battle. Do you know what he did? It says here in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27, that he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. Now, it's just struck me. I mean, what a price to pay. And so here's this man. He's an, he's an ungodly king. And he realizes that there was power in sacrifice. Now, God never called us to sacrifice either children or human beings. But there's power in sacrifice. So that when there's sacrifice, something happens in the spirit world. It attracts something in the spirit world. That's why Satanists, satanic covens, offer human sacrifice. That's why spiritists, witch doctors, will offer a, a, a pig or a goat or a chicken. Sacrifice attracts things in the spirit. So in the spiritual world, sacrifice is acknowledged. Even we, as a church, when we come together and we worship, the Bible calls it a sacrifice of praise. Guess what happens? It attracts the presence of God. Whenever sacrifice was given in the Bible, it attracted the, the Spirit of God. Jonah, in the belly of the whale, it says he offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and God came and delivered him from the, from the belly of the whale. Sacrifice shifts us to another level. Always the fire of God fell on sacrifice. Never do you see in the Bible that the fire just fell on an empty stone. There was always something on the stone. Sacrifice. God's fire, God's presence falls on sacrifice. When God wanted to shift Abraham, he says to Abraham, I want you to give me your son. Now, God has never required human sacrifice, but here's the principle. He says, and, and actually, it says there in Genesis, God tested Abraham. He says, Abraham, I want you to offer a sacrifice. So Abraham took a three-day journey, prepared an altar, put the wood on the, on the altar, and then he bound his son on that altar. I mean, just imagine, just imagine the pain, the pain. The, the cost, the price for this son that he's waited so long for, the son of promise, and that now he's going to have to offer this to, to, to God. But as he was about to plunge that knife into his son, the Lord said, stop. I have provided for you a lamb, a ram that is caught in the thicket, thickets. He said, offer that as a sacrifice. But what in the spirit world, in the spirit world, what Abraham did was he, he shifted himself from being a father of a son to the father of many nations. Sacrifice shifts you. If you're looking for an economic shift, sacrifice. That's what giving does. It shifts us. You need a breakthrough, give God an offering of praise and worship. Sacrifice. It, it, it attracts the presence of God. When God needed to shift the world, He looked in the universe and said, what is there that I could give? What is the most costly sacrifice I could give. He said, I will give my son. 
And that sacrifice was so powerful that it shifted you and I from darkness to light, from slaves to sons. That was the power of that sacrifice. And so when Jesus died, it became a sacrifice of mercy for you and me. And so he says here, uh, by the mercies of God, if we have an understanding of this great sacrifice, the price of this sacrifice, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, we become so grateful for the price that Jesus paid that it becomes easy for us to lay our lives down for the Lord. So God is not looking for us to kill our sons. Not, you know, we're not having any sacrifices yet this morning, okay? By the way, we're not gonna, we, I know some people want, you wanna sacrifice some people, but not today, all right? God has never required that. But there is sacrifices that we see the Lord takes delight in. And so he says, offer yourself a living sacrifice. Let your life, we're not going to put ourselves on wood. We're going to be a walking sacrifice. I'm giving God my body, my mind, my thoughts, my heart and my emotions, my mouth and my words my body and my actions, I'm giving, give your body, give your body a living sacrifice to live in denial of self in some areas. And he says this, a holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It means it's just your, it's the least of the least that we can do in thanksgiving to God. Because of all that he's done and who he is, this is the least that I offer him. And then it says this, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove the, what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So I, how, how am I going to walk in the will of God through sacrifice? I'm not going to walk in the will of God by just living a carnal life, a cursed life, a uh, hating people. I will never fulfill the will of God. But sacrifice causes me to fulfill the will of God. The Lord says that concerning Christ, he says, here I am to do your will. Oh God, he gave his life a living sacrifice. The lamb of God led to the slaughter. Amen. So that's God saying, now come, he says, now come be a living sacrifice. So what does that mean? Now it goes on and says this, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Church, the first thing we can put on the altar is pride. That's the first thing we can put down. Don't think too much of ourselves as if by our own strength we have achieved anything. Everything was by God's grace. Even the gifts that you have is by God's grace. Even if God has prospered you, it was for, by His grace for His glory. The first thing we put on the altar is our pride and our name. In fact, the Bible says, if you exalt yourself, I will bring you down. But if you humble yourself, I will lift you up. It is the way of, of the kingdom. It is the way of sacrifice. So we lay our life down for others. And then it says, for uh, we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So now he's talking about gifts. Each one of us have gifts. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. No, nobody can say, I exist alone. All right? We exist for each other. My body is alive because it's connected to my body, right? Cut anything off my body, it dies. Within hours, it's going to die. So we're all connected to the body. We bless one another. We love one another. And it says this. So we being many are one body in Christ, individually members of one another, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them if prophecy, prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let me tell you right now, any ministry is a sacrifice. You see, there's people that have gifts 
like we see our beautiful uh, musicians, how many of you will be able to love to play the piano like Lester? <coughs> I would sometimes say, Lord, just touch my hands. I stand at the piano and nothing happens. People have talents and gifts. They're just born like my son. I taught my son how to play his first chord, D. And I told him, G, A. Now, when I watch my son, he's like, and I'm like, how do you do that? Because when I try and do this, I have a disconnection between this finger and this finger. They don't work together. What is that? It's just a talent. It's just a gift. But God says, take your gift and use them for my glory. But when we do that, it's a sacrifice. How many of you know the people came here early to practice? In fact, they were here Thursday night as well to practice. How many of you know that that was a sacrifice to the Lord? Even giving. He says, if you, if I, God says, if I've blessed you to be a giver, give, give generously, you know, liberally. Because even when you've been anointed in the area of finance, I can tell you, when the Lord says to you to give a million, it's a sacrifice. <clears throat> Those of you that think it's not a sacrifice, it's only because you've never had a million. <laughs> Ministry is a sacrifice. We have people serving in the children's church. They give up time. That, and even as a parent, how many of you know there were parents here yesterday bringing their children to band practice? So, and they sounded awesome this morning, by the way. And how many of you know that was a sacrifice? Taking them to youth. How many of you know what it's like? You're sitting at home. It's, it's like nine, half past nine. You can't get in your pajamas. You can't relax in your bed because you have to go and pick up your kids. It's a sacrifice to cause them to grow in the kingdom. So never think that ministry is not a sacrifice. This is well pleasing to the Lord. When you use your gifts and your talents that he has given for the benefit of all. And you do it with grace. And you do it with cheerfulness. And with blessing. Now he goes on and says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Even this is a sacrifice. I remember Tammy and I were watching, the, we went to the movies together. And it just started off with, in such a horrible way, so, so filthy, that we looked at each other and said, we can't stay here, and we left. How many of you know it was a sacrifice because we paid like 160 bucks to get in? In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, if you're going to live a life for Jesus, there's going to be choices that you make that are a sacrifice to the Lord so that you can, be, so that you can cling to what is good. That is a sacrifice. Why am I speaking to you? Because when we read this scripture, be a sacrifice, be a living sacrifice, sometimes people think that it's talking about the monks. That you're going to go and now live your life as a, a monk on a hill somewhere and never leave the building. No, the Lord is saying, listen, there's areas that we can give that are well-pleasing to the Lord. Abhor what is evil. When, when we make choices to stay away from what is wrong, did you know that that is a sacrifice? Every time you make a decision not to go to a certain place that dishonors God, it was a living sacrifice to the Lord, well-pleasing to Him. I was thinking of the life of Lot, you know, this week, and Abraham and Lot. Abraham said to Lot, you know, we're having problems, our our." The shepherds are fighting. <coughs> he says to them, I want you to choose. You, you choose this side or you choose that side? Which land do you want? So Lot looked this side. It was just desert. He looked this side. It was green and lush and beautiful. He says, you know, if you don't mind, I'll take this side. Abraham lived a life of sacrifice. He preferred Lot. He said, I bless you. You go. And Abraham took the land that was just a desert, right? But look at the life of Lot. He thought he chose the better part. But what he didn't realize is that every, every other pagan also chose this place. And in this place was a society that was godless, no fear of God, hated the Lord. Just, um, and, and what happened was his family, the hearts of his family got attached to this ungodly lifestyle. 
And to the point where in this area, there was a place called Sodom and Gomorrah that was so wicked, so evil, that um, God said, I'm bringing judgment on the city. Fire and brimstone are coming to the city. I'm going to destroy the city. And God, and you know, Lot had two daughters, they were virgins, and he had other daughters in the city, because the Bible speaks of his sons-in-law. And he went to the, he, they went to, to the sons-in-law and to his other daughters. He pleaded with them. He said, please, we, you must leave the city. You've got to leave everything that you have here. And they rejected him as their father. Basically what they said, we're not leaving, we're not leaving our stuff we're not leaving our lifestyle. We're not leaving the parting. We don't believe in this God that, that you want to serve. So even he lost his daughters. That's why create an environment in your home. We're creating an environment in our church, in our children's church, in our school. Keep your children in the environment of heaven. What happened to Lot is he made a choice that took his kids into an environment that was ungodly, and he lost them. Even his own wife was touched by this corruption, in that when they were fleeing the city, the Lord said, don't turn back, and she turned back. Why? Because her heart was connected there. Lost everything. In other words, God was saying, listen, when you abhor, it's going to be a sacrifice. You know, what, you know what she was saying? Because he was a wealthy man. She looked back. She saw her palatial house. She saw all her servants. She saw all her things. And in her heart, she said, I cannot sacrifice this lifestyle. I want to turn back. But sacrifice says, I will abhor what is evil. I'm going to cling to what is good. And it's a sacrifice on our part. It's a sacrifice on your part. Every time you have chosen righteousness, that sacrifice went to heaven. Straight to the Lord. And it pleased the heart of the Father. Cling to what is good. Verse 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. That's what Abraham did. Abraham looked at Lot. He said, brother, I'm going to give honor to you. Even though, I, even though I am the greater, I'm going to show you brotherly love. You choose, brother. Isn't that so nice? It's kind of like coming with two keys. You have the, you have the Ferrari keys and you have the... Huh? Which one? A Taz. Okay, I used to have a Taz, okay. So uh, you, have the, you have the Ferrari and the Taz, and, and, the, and, then the, and, then you, and you go to your friend. You say, listen, I was given two keys, brother. I want you to choose. <laughs> Don't look so holy now. <laughs> you know what you would have done? You would have, you would have kept the Ferrari, and you say, listen, um, I've got this keys for this Taz. I'm going to give it to you at half the price. No, Abraham says, I will prefer you. And that sacrifice was beautiful to the Lord. So brotherly kindness, even brotherly kindness, just being nice to somebody, the Lord said, this sacrifice is well-pleasing to the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Just by being nice to somebody, even when you came to church and they took your seats and you were nice to them, the Lord honored that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't God so, he's not asking for your son. He's simply asking us to be a living sacrifice. To walk this thing out. Uh, then it goes on and says this. Um, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That in our service of the Lord, everything you do for Jesus is a sacrifice that is well pleasing, well pleasing to Him. But He wants it with a fervent spirit. In other words, God doesn't want us here and say, I'm, I'm here because the Lord wants me here, but I'm not happy to be here. No, he says, be fervent. When you praise him, do it with fervency. When you love him, do it with fervency. Amen. Let it be pleasing to the Lord. What is that? It's a sacrifice. Sometimes, you know what it's like Sunday morning? You've had a late Sunday night and you come to church and your wife or your husband or your mom and dad have dragged you to the church and you're just feeling tired, but you worship God anyway. It is a sacrifice that is well-pleasing to the Lord. Isn't that beautiful today? And he goes on and says this, um, rejoicing in hope, 
patience and tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. All these things are being a living sacrifice. You've been praying for something, and it's just taking its time. It's like you're going through the tribulation, and, and God sees your heart, and that you don't withdraw from God when there's a sacrifice or a difficulty. You know, when your prayer isn't answered, and now you don't want to worship God anymore. And when you do that anyway, God sees that as a sacrifice that is well-pleasing to Him. It goes straight to the throne room of heaven. And then it goes on and says this, distributing to the needs of the saints, acts of love, all your sacrifice, all your, <coughs> all your giving, all the hours the team goes out early to distribute, to distribute to the needs of the poor, standing there in the middle of winter by a truck, giving out beanies and gloves and some food. What was that? It's a sacrifice. Well pleasing to the Lord. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Come on, we're getting real now. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what God says. When you make a decision to bless somebody even though they've hurt you, God says, I see that as a, a, well, a pleasing sacrifice that goes up to the Lord. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. You know, there's a business principle, and I, un I understand what they're saying. They're saying that you must associate with people with where you want to go. But in the kingdom, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. But I'm so glad Jesus was found in a manger. I'm so glad that we can love one another. All right, that is a sacrifice where we love one another, we serve one another, and we are humble. We don't have to be wise in our own opinions. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Live peace and be at peace whenever there's a misunderstanding, whenever there's a difficulty. God says, as much as it's up to you, live at peace with people. Just love people. Don't repay evil. Somebody didn't greet you, now you don't greet them for one month. Someone didn't smile at you, say, I won't smile at them. They didn't invite me, I won't invite them. God says, don't, don't repay evil for evil because I'm so glad God didn't do that for us even though we were sinful against Him. He gave and He gave His sacrifice. He gave His love towards us and the Lord says, imitate me. Even as I imitate Christ, God wants us to imitate His nature. Don't repay evil for evil because it's a sacrifice that's well-pleasing to the Lord. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now, I know some of you are thinking God's going to get your enemies. He's not going to repay them. No. He's going to repay you. I will repay. In other words, it works like this. Let's say you have a job and somebody else gets the promotion. But you know you should have got the promotion. Just say, is anybody that feel like that? Okay, nobody. All right. Doesn't matter what it is, but you feel that you were done in. But instead of cursing them, instead of walking in unforgiveness and now wrath and evil, you raise your hands to heaven. You say, Lord, I bless. Lord, I speak life. And I thank you, Father, you see where I am. And Lord, you've promised that, Lord, you would open doors for me. And when you choose to live a life of sacrifice, God is watching you. And when he sees that, you know what he does? He looks around and he says in that, he says, you know what? In this company, there's no position high enough for you. Let me look around for you, son. I, 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 want, to, I want to repay you. I want to repay you. God, we, when we read that scripture, it says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. We, we see God going and killing your enemies. No, forget your enemies. God says he's going to repay you for your kindness. He's going to repay you for your sacrifice. He's going to find something for you to walk in. Come on, just celebrate right now. Isn't that powerful? Powerful, man. God's going to repay me. God will, God will sort my life out. You see, because when there's sacrifice, fire always fell on sacrifice. 
When you offer a sacrifice, it attracts the spirit world. And when you offer these sacrifices, it attracts the blessings of Almighty God upon your life. But the moment you said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that guy's brakes and I hope he hits the wall and dies. I went, mm. God is saying, that's not my son. Now you took, there's no fire on the sacrifice. You took his hand off your life. Now you're going to stay in that job for the rest of your life. Hmm? But when you, if you had offered a sacrifice, the Lord says, Son, now I will repay you. Now I will bless you. Now I will, I, will lift, I will put my favor upon your life. Isn't that so good today? I love that. Verse 20 says, it even gets worse. Listen to this. Listen to this. Some of you are not going to like this today. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. Some of you might be sitting next to your enemy this morning. Just turn to the person next to you and just say to them these words. I would like to invite you for lunch today. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Feed your enemies. Maybe it's your wife. You feel like she's your enemy. Just take her to lunch, baby. Take her to lunch. Come on. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. No laxatives in there either. Just give him pure water. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Isn't that powerful? Come on, South Campus, give the Lord a hand. So powerful, so powerful. Wow, sacrifice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the presence of God upon my life by living a life of sacrifice. God's not looking for anything that you cannot give him. I'm not as holy as Abraham. I don't think I would give him my son. I'm so glad he hasn't asked. But he has asked for my body, my thoughts, my heart, my attitude, my service, my words. Bless and do not curse. You know, every time you curse somebody, you took God's hand off your life to move on your behalf. I want to tell you, God can do so much more for you in one second than you can do for you in your whole lifetime. Trust the Lord. Amen. Let's trust Him. We're going to offer sacrifice to Him. So let's stand together right now on South Campus. Let's stand with Pastor Mason. And I want you just to raise your hands as an as a, as a, as a indication of sacrifice. We're just saying, Lord, I raise my hands as, as my sacrifice to you. And Lord, I give you my words. I give you my body. And just begin to offer it. Say, Lord, here I am. Use me. That Lord, I would, I would walk in your perfect will. I would walk in the perfect plan of God for my life. Lord, I give you every, everyone that's hurt me, Lord. I put them on the altar right now, and I bless them. Lord, everybody that's offended me, I put them on the altar, and I bless them. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing in my life. I feel, Lord, I'm not being used. Put it on the altar and say, Lord, here I am. I bless you anyhow. I bless you, and I love you, and I worship you. Just put it on the altar right now. Say yes to the Lord. You're so holy. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. You're so faithful to us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, you will repay everything. I thank you, Lord, you will never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you, Lord, you always provide for us, Lord. And we trust you to open doors that we could never open for ourselves. And X Church, I bless you. South Campus, I bless you. Father, we ask for fire to fall upon us, Lord. We ask you for increase, Lord. Shift us, Lord, as a church into another dimension of love, into another dimension of holiness, into another dimension of the kingdom. Shift, 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 shift us, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. We lay our lives once again before you. We take up our cross. We follow you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for your sacrifice. 
in the name of Jesus. Just while every eye is closed, every head is bowed, let's just put our hands down for one second. Maybe you came here this morning, but Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. You're saying, Pastor, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to invite Jesus into my heart. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm simply going to pray a prayer with you. But I want you to indicate to me by simply on the count of three, when I count three, you're going to just raise your hand, wave it at me, put it down again. You say, Pastor, I want to pray this prayer of salvation. And we're going to pray and trust Jesus to come into your life today. One, two, three. Just raise your hands. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, I see your hand. Thank you at the back. I see your hand. Even on the balcony, if you're there. Just wave at me and say, yes, Pastor, today is my day. In the mother's room, wherever you might be, you say yes to the Lord. All right? Now, we're going to pray this prayer together. If you raise your hand, just pray with me. Church, let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. Right now, I open my heart and I ask you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come into my heart. Wash me and cleanse me. Make me brand new. Today I surrender my life and I ask that you become the Lord of my life. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me of all my sins. And I thank you today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.